June 6, 1967, day two of the war. Having destroyed two-thirds of the Egyptian Air Force the previous day, Israeli forces now engaged Egyptian tanks and ground troops positioned to attack Israel. Israeli tanks swept through the Sinai Desert and would defeat Egypt's armored divisions despite Israeli tanks being outnumbered three to one. Egyptian General Amr, realizing the extent of his defeat, ordered a retreat. Most of the Sinai was now in Israel's hands. By noon the next day, Israel would capture the port of Sharm el-Sheikh. This allowed Israel to reopen the sea lanes that Egypt had blockaded two weeks earlier in an act of war. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, Israeli troops dashed through the Jordanian-held sector of Jerusalem and reached the strategic high point of Mount Scopus, overlooking the old city. They were at a disadvantage. Israeli forces would not use artillery on the Jordanian troops in the old city because of its historic and religious significance to Judaism, Islam and Christianity. In an emergency session at the United Nations in New York, Abba Ibn, Israel's foreign minister, addressed the UN Security Council. Israel had reached a somber hour. An army greater than any force ever assembled in history in Sinai had massed against Israel's southern frontier. Nasser had provocatively brought five infantry divisions and two armored divisions up to our very gates. 80,000 men and 900 tanks were poised to move. As the attacks on Israel continued, Israeli Prime Minister Eshkol appealed to the Soviets, who were supporting Egypt, to help secure peace. But the Soviet Union demanded that Israel immediately and unconditionally halt all military operations, an option Israel could not afford while still being attacked. The war was not yet over.